And then next, I'd like to bring up Will from Kogane. So uh, William J. Miller III, he's National Marketing Manager for Kogane. Um, so Kogane is a first American. Uh, he's the first American hired by Kogane, a privately owned Japanese manufacturer in their 85th year history. William has been on a mission since day one, which is to build one of the largest network of channel partners, distributor dealers in the, in the Americas and deliver the highest quality product to the hands of engineers that are making the future of everything that is made. William has traveled the world from Petatifka, Israel to Tokyo, Japan, and just about everywhere in between. His current role, head of marketing for North and South America, William is also the host of a national manufacturing podcast produced and managed by Jacket Media Company. So it's called Where's Willie Podcast. So right now I'd like to bring up uh, Will. All right. All right, everybody. So I appreciate all your patience. As you guys know, going virtual, there's always going to be challenges uh, with the internet. So I apologize. But I assure you, this will be well worth the wait. Okay. All right. So uh, just to give, give you guys a little bit of context, the reason why I volunteered to share um, at least my insights based on what I've been doing with Kogane and my experience over the last 15 years traveling globally from Patakhtik, Israel, all the way to Tokyo, Japan, um, I've always worked for a supplier working with distributors, understanding very clearly the distribution uh, relationship with suppliers and what we are both trying to achieve. Um, this all started with a conversation that I had with Tim a year ago at the AHTD. Um, and he had asked, hey, do you think e-commerce will ever happen in our industry? And I said, absolutely not. Uh, we have partnered over uh, with 50 distributor organizations coast to coast here in North and South America and they are geographically protected and uh, local distributors, I think will always be catalog companies. Well, unfortunately, I think that that has changed. So I'm eating my words and I wanted to get on and share uh, what I think uh, over the next couple slides uh, that you're gonna see is the reality of where the industry is. And I think that, you know, we do a very good job of, you know, putting on our sport coats, uh, you know, having uh, a couple cold milks at our events um, and at least for me, over the last two years that we've been associated with AHTD, I think we have to uh, start being a lot more real about the current state of affairs and where we're at and really start talking openly about a strategy and what we're doing uh, for us to grow. So, uh, Tim, if you can go to the next slide. All right. So the reality is this, um, you know, here we are present day facing Corona, COVID-19, whatever you call it, AKA, we can't go nowhere. Um, so I think that maybe by circumstance, serendipity, et cetera, this reality was coming regardless of any type of pandemic. So this first slide, I wanna talk about what we all know is the big elephant in the room, or in this case, the DC cap rhino, okay? Um, E-commerce is here, it's been here and it's been in my opinion, uh, so everything that I'm going to share with you guys today is my own opinion. It is not represented or supported by Kogane, who employs and pays me. So I just want to uh, give you guys that context as well. The industry is changing, and it was changing before Corona happened. Uh, you know, and I'll reference, you know, many of you that have been in the industry even longer than me, as I said, 15 years, some of you have 30 plus years. <coughs> Back in the 80s, there was handshakes, cigars, and a pocket full of quarters, and many of you had hip dysplasia from carrying those Hoover books. Whether you're looking up NASIC's code, you were getting to know your APR, your geographic territory in your vehicle, and going to visit customers face-to-face. -face. In the 90s and 2000s, fax machines start saying goodbye, and our parents learn how to start typing on a machine called a computer. Um, the reality is, the old way of doing business has changed uh, significantly. More suppliers than ever before are available to distribution, uh, mostly because of globalization. Uh, companies like, for instance, Kogane. Many of you never even knew who Kogane was, which makes sense because Kogane came to North America only in 2015. We used to have a master dis distribution agreement, but I'm not gonna talk about that because it really brought nobody any value. Kogane established themselves in Fremont, California, 2015. Since then, I have been trying frantically and relentlessly to teach people how to say our name correctly and have them understand that we are not from Pyongyang or somewhere else, but we're actually a privately owned Japanese manufacturer. That being said, how have contracts changed? So I've seen this paradigm shift from when we talk about the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and present day. 
in the early days, many of the uh, distribution partners did a couple things well. Same with suppliers. Number one, they had trust with one another. Um, they were very strategic on who they wanted to represent as a brand, as a technology, as a solution provider. So most line cards, as we reference, um, a given distributor in a given geographic area would represent maybe five to 10 at most uh, supplier brands or technologies to serve all the customers in their geographic APR or driving distance uh, that would use any of these components. So. We are pneumatic, electric, uh, robotic components. As you guys know, there's a lot of automation, PLCs, different drives, et cetera. So different technologies, and you are the local supplier for these customers. Now, today, I think the industry has turned, unfortunately, um, because of e-commerce, because of these big catalog companies that are don't provide as much value as a local distributor, Many of these distributors are carrying more and more suppliers and they're almost becoming Walmart. I do not have a problem with this um, because I just think it's a reality. Um, all of our contracts that we have with our distributors, we don't have um, exclusivity. Um, and even though they try to tell us that we have to be, we respect that. But the reality is how can a distributor serve their customer by limiting the brands or the technologies that they have? And the reality is they can't. So distributors have to take on new suppliers, even if it's not their intention to have a line card now with over 90 different manufacturers. But the local distributor wants, you know, Mike and Pete to buy from them. So the reality is, and I say this when I do other talks, and I said this, um, you know, with a, uh, the National Association of Manufacturing on a speaking engagement that I had. Distributors today, their job is for any OEM or manufacturer within their APR. And again, each distributor has different uh, size uh, geographies, different size sales staff, et cetera. They want every manufacturer that needs something to go physically or online to that distributor to buy what they need, whether it's a Kogan A valve, whether it's Norgren, whether it's Bimbo, whether it's whoever, the thousands of lines that they represent, they want them to go there. The reality is, over the course of the 80s, 90s, 2000s to now, suppliers would sit back and say, well, we have a contract with our distributor. It's their job to build our brand. It's their job to put us in the car and go visit OEM customers because we are giving them a discount to do so. So the value of the contracts between supplier and distribution was predicated on two things. Number one, building the brand and allowing a supplier like Coganade to get market penetration geographically. That was number one. Number two, it was you're going to stock locally so we can deliver fast because we all know if a customer has to wait two, three weeks lead time, they may go outside of your APR and go to one of your competitive distributors because unfortunately your supplier didn't have stock locally. You didn't have stock either. So there you lose the local customer. This paradigm, this elephant in the room, this DC cab rhino has been going on. Now, present day, because of COVID-19 pandemic, we have distributor owners that are going, hmm, we have sales representatives that are making, in some cases, 100, 200, 300,000 a year on commissions because they've had the same accounts for the last 30 years. And those uh, sales representatives really don't care about the owners from the stance of, if the owners threaten to say, hey, we're gonna to have to cut the territory down because you brought in no new customers, because over the course of the year, you've done a very good job of taking care of 90% of the opportunity that's out there. So unless you expand to new markets or you expand to you know more real estate, bigger geographic areas, distributors are not gonna grow. And the problem is if they're limited in their, in their curtain geography, and now e-commerce from catalog companies can come in and pluck and take their customers virtually, How does what's gonna to happen to the future of distribution? So, you know, that's the first part is talking about, you know, uh, industry. Now I wanna talk about territory. Back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s, um, you know, the distributor uh, sales representative, uh, they knew Betty, Ricky, Bobby, Larry, and all their kids. But now they're succumbed to sitting in a lobby holding donuts. Truth is, because of the pandemic, the salespeople are not on the road. Maybe they are. So some of you guys can humble me. But for the vast majority 
okay? They're reaching out saying, hey, we want to keep all of our girlfriends happy, all of our suppliers like Kogan A, because, you know, within the territory, um, you're not getting any new business because you're covering 90% of the business. So you, 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 all the distributors have to figure out, okay, how are we going to keep loyalty? Um, but the reality is, once we start to consider e-commerce, the biggest protection in these agreements is going to change, which is exclusivity, geographic protection from suppliers, suppliers like Kogan A not being allowed to sign another distributor down the road from you three miles. Um, I think that's been what has really limited distributors and suppliers from either A, going direct, B, uh, keeping their agreements with their suppliers for exclusivity, supporting one another and keeping that partnership. But e-commerce, lack of being able to meet with customers, something has to change. When we look at the market, okay, many of you um, used to sell air logic, diaphragm poppet valves, mechanical, the heart of automation. Nowadays, that has all changed. You're selling robotics, you're selling advanced automation, uh, IIoT. The annual 3% price increase, complete BS in my opinion. But your suppliers continue to do that. Why? I think the biggest reason is the operational costs are increasing. Suppliers are seeing very little growth because basically you've capped out geograph geographically um, the, the, the opportunity. If you're serving 90% of a geographic location, there isn't much room to grow. So the best way to impact your balance sheet is to apply a 3% increase uh, and relate it to operational costs, but that goes directly to your bottom line. Suppliers are notorious for doing it. Many suppliers do it annually. Um, I will not say that Kogan A will never have a price increase, but we haven't had one in eight years. Um, so I think that suppliers need to wake up, stop being ignorant, and understand that uh, the distributors... The, our dependency on the distributors has to change. We have to start building our brand. We have to start driving offline sales to our distributors' websites so they can have more transactions. Um, I'll also say, you know, technology has changed. AI, uh, the ability to automate transactional salespeople are going away. Uh, you really have to be able to bring a lot of value and sell something unique that these catalog companies or other people that are in your APR uh, don't have. And I think that there's some confusion in that, and we'll get into that um, in a couple of slides. Uh, I want to talk about your costs. So I had already mentioned some sales folks in their 50s, 60s are making ridiculous money. I personally know at least 10 distributor sales representatives that have had their territory for 20 plus years. They're making net take home over 250 thousand dollars a year what's their incentive to retire now the challenge as an owner is you want to integrate some kind of trap uh, i was also talking about you know your costs so we as a distributor you know what do we do minimum on orders four turns a year dead inventory returns wasted dollars the need to drop ship to have just in time suppliers need to stock but then where's the value of the relationship it begins to suffer Suppliers say, hey, distributors get discounts for a reason, to build a brand stock locally. That used to work. When you have 80% of your crops all set with corn, how can I accept reality to think that you are now going to sell Kogane watermelons in the same field? You can't do that. Um, what's the one thing that we hear all the time? I just interviewed, if you guys saw, uh, Larry White, uh, the owner of Interlinks. Distributors, they want leads. Suppliers, they want leads. So we'll both just sit around and wait till one of us give each other leads. Truth is, if you don't get new business, suppliers say bye-bye. And if suppliers' brand isn't being asked for, distributors aren't going to want to push the brand. It's not their job. Sales To me, sales staff today, they make ridiculous commissions. They're leaving distributor owners with fewer and fewer pennies because operational costs are increasing. But, but your own sales staff threatens to leave if you take that away. The way we've always done it is really starting to bite everybody in the biscuits. So um, what are we gonna do regarding e-commerce? 
to be clear, Kogan A, we are not in e-commerce, okay? We are supporting our distributors, but if they choose to go to e-commerce, you've got to look at the investment. The challenge is you can make the investment all you want to have the best technology, to have an e-commerce platform with the best configurator, the best online transaction software that's out there. But if nobody knows who you are, if nobody knows that you spent 50, 60, $70,000 to implement this new virtual online catalog ordering system similar to like an Amazon locally, it's not going to work. So this slide deck that I'm going to talk about next has to do with you know, what, what's going to happen? What do we have to do? So Tim, go to the next slide, please. Okay. At the AHTD events, and I love this, when I walk in, everybody's dressed so nice. Uh, we have a lot of bravado. We talk about how great we're all doing. Nobody tells the truth. Everybody says, oh, we're having a banner year, the best we've ever had. Uh, we're doing so many value add assemblies. It's ridiculous. But yet when we're online, virtually, which we are all beginning to embrace to keep up with e-commerce and not lose any more customers because the old way of sales business doesn't work, we're mice. Many of you that I know personally, where I've shaken your hand prior to COVID, um, you know, I've heard great stories. I hear about great successes. Yet online, you have no presence. So from my standpoint as a supplier, if the reality is all distributors are looking at building a online store, going e-commerce, that discussion you have to have, and thankfully I'm in marketing now, so you have to talk to our national sales manager about that agreement. How are you guys going to face protectionism against a uh, supplier You know, going to other lines? How are you going to be able to win or convince the supplier that they need to stay exclusive with you if you're going to start selling out of territory? Because when you go e-commerce, that 1000% happens. So within this slide, I talk about, you know, the reason why all of us have to embrace uh, e-commerce or, you know, push offline sales. Many of you aren't on social media. Many, many of you don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. I've had to ask my 15-year-old daughter to do it, to which she's embarrassed and says, Dad, don't ever tell anybody that I'm helping you do this. The reality is, you know, when you go online, you become exposed, Okay. Uh, not just exposed to, you know, your knowledge base, the value that you're bringing customers. You, can, you become exposed to, number one, your suppliers. For example, I always say we don't want to make our girlfriends angry. So when I'm on LinkedIn, for example, and I see some of my distributors that I love, we've had wonderful dinners together, we've had a lot of good uh, activity together, and then I see them promoting Norgren or SMC, BARF. But then how do they feel when they see Willie promoting a distributor near them? Willie stinks, but we're both doing it. We're both trying to show value to those we serve. For me, as I pontificate from the Kogan A USA company page that we've been growing, Kogan A, global manufacturer, Japanese quality. We're available at 50 locations coast to coast here in the Americas. I want to highlight every one of my distributors so locally people know the brand and locally they know where they can go. So if my distributors are staying brick and mortar or if they're going to e-commerce, I want to continue to push that because, again, in my mind, if I'm building the brand and now I, I'm able to start getting people to ask for the Kogane brand, the next step is they need to know where they can get it. And ideally, my distributors who ask us, Kogane, hey, we need leads, we need leads, that's what Willie's doing. So uh, I want to continue doing those things, but I can't do it alone. Our other suppliers, fortunately for me, are hesitant to embrace going online and being social and being virtual. But that's where the attention is. If you're not meeting people face to face, if you're not giving them donuts, if you're not meeting Becky in the lobby and seeing Frank and talking about their kids because now they're online and virtually, you have to go where your customers are. And if you don't, you will lose. 100% you will lose. I'm seeing it now. And that's why I think that there are members at AHTD that accept that reality and are making changes to go where the customers and the attention is. And that's virtually, and that's through e-commerce. <sighs> AHTD in the world is watching. So you have to be smart. I think that you know, one of the biggest challenges for distributors is isolating or protecting your value because your competition is always the first to respond. 
They're the first to view your profile. For those of you that aren't on LinkedIn, there you have the ability to see who looks at your profile. Um, and so for me, <laughs> so for me, if I see, uh, you know, if I do a post, I'll immediately see SMC, Mac, Norgren, Bimba, Festo, everybody's looking at my at my post. And I, and I can bet that you as a distributor, if you talk about, hey, we just launched a new online store, your first people that are gonna go to your comments or see your post are gonna be your competitive distributors, your competitive suppliers, and they're gonna go to their distribution network and say, hey, Pete up the road just did an online store. You need to do that. And so, you know, when you go online, you become exposed. Everybody can see what you do, your customers, your suppliers, AHTD members, and that's just the reality. And again, we all have to swallow our pride and realize this is where the attention is. This is what we have to do. And I think more distributors than suppliers. You know, I can highlight a new technology that we make. That's easy. Kogane made this. And I can talk about a feature, a benefit, um, a solution that this would provide. So this is a Ethernet IP uh, drive. As a distributor, if you're only stocking 70 or 90 different brands, you're going to tell everybody, hey, we've got everything you're looking for from a mop to a valve. We've got it all. That's great. But what's the value? Because Motion's doing that. So is um, Command. So is everybody outside of your APR that's selling to your customers, that's visually seen on social media to drive off on sales, stealing your customers and your APR. You really got to start thinking about what the value is you're bringing. And if I hear another distributor say we do value at assembly, I'm sorry, that's now a commodity. Every distributor is doing that. And then what's going to happen when the catalog companies say, hmm, so if you have, if you sell extruded aluminum and you do framing and you have engineers and that's what you're selling and telling everybody online, what happens if Motion says, well, well we're going to hire our own engineers and we're going to start doing that and we're going to deliver faster and we're going to have no minimums. And we're going to say, hey, if you buy $500 worth, we're going to give you a $100 credit back. So there's some significant challenges that's happening because of e-commerce, because of globalization. And we just have to accept the fact that you, you can't hide, you have to be seen or you're not gonna sustain uh, in the next five to 10 years, my opinion. Slide three, please. All right, so I talk about confused experience. So orders, transaction, sales, in my mind, those are dead. Uh, those were referencing the sales uh, people that have been going to the same account because it was an OEM spec that you got the drawing for, you spec the parts, and they've been buying it for 25 years. That's wonderful. What have you done lately? What have you do, done to generate new business? So AI and automation now can handle that transaction of the same orders. If you're doing forecasting, the owners uh, can now implement this software. So many of these OEM customers can go online uh, you know, you have a quick discussion or an email confirming your forecast for 2021, for example, by quantity. All these transactions now can now be automated. So you really have to start talking about bringing real value, whether that's experience, whether that's, um, you know, your understanding of technology. You have to become the thought leader or the resource that everybody goes to. And I think that, like I said, we've had some wonderful guest speakers that talk about it. I know uh, Brian Fanzo talked about, you know, pressing the damn button. I live in West Michigan and I have horrible internet service. That's why I've cut out twice, so I apologize. Um, but I'm starting to see that by being present online, I'm getting more and more traffic and people just coming to me because I'm comfortable now to be on camera. I'm comfortable enough to talk about the 512,000 products that Kogane makes. I'm comfortable enough to talk about my experience. Uh, I'm not saying I'm the best at it, but I definitely have 15 years of experience of working with distribution, so I think I have a little bit of insight that some people are starting to see value. I said it before, if nobody sees you, that's one thing. Now, if people are starting to see you and they see, great, you went all in, you're embracing e-commerce, we have to now focus on that experience for the customer. So when I talk about confused experience, time beats relationship. So your customers, you, you can't continue to be selling the me too's and the commodity. You have to have them. For example, one of the drawbacks about partnering with Kogane is we are not a drop in replacement company. 90% of the sales in industrial automation is 
round body cylinders, linear actuators. Uh, coconut dimensionally footprint, we don't match. Typically, same bore and stroke, we're going to be dimensionally smaller. That presents a problem for a distributor that says, hey, we have coconut, but uh, it's not form, fit, and function. It's not going to fit the same dimension. So they have to make modifications. If it's on a drawing, you, you can't use coconut. So really for Kogan A, anybody that partners with us, I know uh, CNE Sales, we're proud to have them uh, as one of our newest uh, distributors. So thank you, Carrie, uh, for your support. We've talked openly about when we started our partnership, we have to drive new OEM business. Kogan A will never be for any of you that ever talked to us, an MRO drop and replacement, another line that's on your card that everybody's gonna call and ask for. Well, if you're out of stock with Clifford, can we use Kogan A? Or if you're out of stock of Kogan A, can we use SMC? It doesn't matter. You know, the reality is you've gotta have everything and you've gotta be speed to market, not confuse the customer. So, and that's led to distributors feedback to us. We have to have better configurators because now everybody virtually is coming to you as a distributor and ordering the exact part number that they already configured with your suppliers uh, on the screen. So I just think that if you're gonna embrace e-commerce, your messaging that you do for offline sales has to be consistent with what you have on your platform. So whether you use DC Cap to help uh, you know, create a new website, uh, to have that AI that's introduced, to have that automation in place for all transaction orders or MRO orders, and you wanna focus on OEM transactions, you as a distributor, similar to what I'm doing at Kogan A, you have to talk about specifically what you can offer. And in my mind, before you talk about how great the lines are that you represent, because those lines you represent are also probably in 50 plus other locations in North America, there has to be some kind of incentive that you as the, you as the distributor provide that all of your customers in your APR geographic area feel the incentive to still go to you versus Motion or anybody else. Okay, so I'll just, I'll say that. Don't confuse the experience. Make sure that your messaging that you're doing on the social platform or virtually or webinars, or again, getting the attention of the customers that you serve is consistent with the messaging that you have on your website. Okay, slide four, please. All right. Your time is now, and there's the timing, in my mind, is probably the biggest opportunity. Here's why. You get on LinkedIn, Facebook Live, um, Twitter, um, Vimeo, YouTube. It costs all of you zero dollars to post, zero dollars to do a video, zero dollars to highlight one of the brands that you represent and a new innovation that they have. However, Unfortunately, getting that for free, which you've never been able to do when you ordered line cards, when you order, you know, the extruded aluminum books and, and uh, you know, how to make things, that all costs you guys money. So we all have the opportunity to go virtually to, if you're going to go outside of your ge geographic territory or not, to become the voice, the resource that everybody goes to, why would you not take advantage right now when it costs you nothing to do that, okay? Percentage, it's a numbers game. As I've spent 15 years traveling with different distributors telling me about, well, you know, it's all about percentages. You gotta talk to 100 people. If you get 10%, that's 10 new customers and we have to keep that going. Going virtual, it's the same thing. Right now, many of you, if you haven't embraced e-commerce or you're not doing things to leverage yourself to sustain the next five to 10 years, number one, you have to be present. So you have to, come to existence virtually. Um, one of the things that I'd recommend, so Kogan A, 85 years they've been in business. I'm the first American they ever hired. That was a little scary. Now forward thinking, they're saying, hey, Will, you've been, you know, I was a national sales manager with Kogan A. I helped uh, build our network to 50 uh, stocking distributors coast to coast. Are you willing to go into the brand side and become the head of marketing for the Americas? You're gonna do more than just make line cards. What you're going to start doing is telling our story. You're going to start explaining to the potential customers that we serve. Why would they go to Kogan A versus SMC or Festo or anybody else? Um, I never once ever, two things. One, I never bash our competition. I respect them. There's, there's so much business out there that everybody can do well and I support everybody. Number two, I never, and I go on record for this for those of you watching still, I do not put on LinkedIn or any other social platform that Kogan A is, quote, the best. I simply say, give Kogane a try. 
What I have looked at, Kogane has Ethernet IP. So does every other supplier. Kogane has valves. So does every other supplier. If I look at the portfolio, it took a conversation that I had with our president to simply say, we can't talk about precision. We can't talk about quality because everybody says that. We can't talk about being a drop-in replacement. So we're not going to be in that commodity game. So we're not low margin dollars. We're not going to compete with the air tax of the world or, like I said, some of these off-brands or private labels. Kogane, they 100% test every single part before it ships. Sounds great. The customer doesn't care. Uh, they expect everything to work. For example, I bought kayak roof racks uh, for my kayaks. I didn't care who made them. I expected them to work. So I know that I can't lead and talk about precision, quality testing, things like that. What can I talk about that differentiates Kogane from every other supplier in my mind? As I talk to my distributors, they say, hmm, form, fit, and function, you're dimensionally smaller than everybody else. Kogane currently has the world's smallest solenoid valve. It's the smallest. When you look at our cylinders, we have uh, single acting round body cylinders down to 2.5 millimeter bore. We have uh, tubing down to 1.8 millimeter OD. Kogane specializes in miniaturization, period. So what I've done to leverage what I'm marketing to drive offline sales to our distributors when they call us and say, hey, we saw Will do a video. They have that new world's smallest valve. Can we get more information about that? Engineers, as we all know, they don't like BS, so they don't care about the gel in my hair or how great I think Kogane is. They want free samples. So I've always been very, very good at, and thankfully Kogane has always been willing to give samples out. But the engineers are going to test it anyway. So they're going to do durability testing one to three months, six months if it's going to FDA and it's medical. But it cuts out the BS. So I talk about focus on percentage, focus on getting your company's brand out there, focus on being virtual because that's where the attention is now. Focus on you know, you got to have your own conversations with your sales representatives that are making 300000 a year. They haven't grown new sales in 20 years. You guys, you guys have to figure that out. That's a separate conversation. E-commerce, your time is now. It's here. I can't fight it. Kogane just says, hey, we're going to focus on making good, innovative products. If the products are good, if they bring enough value to engineers, they will sell. Will, you have to build the brand so people know who Kogane is. Um, we're new here. It's going to take time as it always does. This message for e-commerce is my call to action. If you are a distributor, if I was a distributor, I can't physically go see anybody anymore. The value of carrying the, the line cards is over. The saturation of the suppliers because of globalization is here. I want to be present. So if I have a 2,500 mile radius in my physical location where I have local stock that I can deliver in 24 hours or less. I have a service team that can bring value, be the outsource provider to these manufacturers. I'm gonna make sure that virtually to drive offline sales, everybody that uses our products is a part of our technologies. That's an AHTD member is gonna know exactly what we do and how we do it. And I have to accept the reality that A, some co competitors will probably copy, they have to. And B, if you choose not to do these things, I think that in the next five to 10 years, if you are not a part of e-commerce, you will no longer be in business. So I'll kind of wrap up with, um, you know, some more, I guess, ideas of the things that I've been doing. So if you guys haven't followed me on LinkedIn, look up William Miller, Willie Kogan A. Um, I go by Willie, but I'm William when we're in the car with a customer. Couple of things that I'm doing. I started a um, Willie and Yoshi show. So basically, what I do is I act like a big meathead football player because I'm really good at that. And I um, sit down with Yoshi, Yoshinari Fukata. He's the head of our customer service and he has a PhD. So he's brilliant. And I have open conversations about hey, you know, why did Kogane make this? What's the point of us having this product? What are the applications? Because the mind share for a distributor to know the 512,000 products of ours, plus the other 70 companies they represent, is so finite, you literally got to say, oh, this is from Kogane. This is why they made this. Um, I've also been doing live streams. So that's something else that, again, costs you nothing, but will help you guys drive offline sales. So sorry I went on a tangent. I'm sorry that the uh, internet was boggy, but hopefully, um, you know, like I said, you guys have some at least feedback, um, and we can start having this honest dialogue about, you know, what companies are going to begin doing uh, moving forward. Awesome. Thank you so much. 
we do have one question. Uh, you know, as I bring on the rest of the panelists, so we're going to move to the di uh, discussion panel. But um, you know, as they, I bring them all on board, there's a question from Brian. You know, how does e-commerce ordering affect pricing for the customer? If the distributor has special pricing for a customer locally, is that represented on an e-commerce site? All right, so that's a good question. And I can only speak to it, again, from the context of Kogane. So for example, Kogane, if you go to KoganeUSA.com, we don't put, publish any list pricing, okay? I also am not gonna tell any of you what our discount structure is. So if you wanna talk to us, you can. So here's how it works, Brian, for us. We're building the brand and putting all the products out there. When it gets to the customer, so like right now, I'm revamping our entire website. We're working on having uh, selection guides, not so much a configurator, um, but at least selection guides to help customers within three clicks or less. That's been my goal. As I looked at the best, best case practices in our industry of manufacturing, e-commerce, catalog companies, I've gone through all their websites. The benchmark is you have to be able to get an engineer or a prospect to a specific product or part number within three clicks or less. I'm working on doing that with Kogane. The next step, click number four is contact one of our 50 locations or the one nearest you, okay? I'm doing this to try and generate lead activity for our distributors because if I can do that, then they're gonna, their mind share is gonna increase with Kogane. To answer your question, for the suppliers, and there are suppliers, and I'm not bad mouthing them, that do publish their list pricing. They also have the ability for customers to buy direct from them. They are gonna pay a lot more. So I guess the question is, going back to what I said with the offline sales, is your messaging, hey, go to Kogane USA, get a quote today, or is it what I've been consistent in saying, go, go to Kogane USA, learn more about this specific product, and then contact us to find the distributor nearest you to get pricing and availability or lead time. So your, to answer your question, it's two ways. If you're a supplier that publishes list price, then the conversation and the messaging has to be, hey, everybody, you know, for example, this is a you know Ethernet card for directional control valves. Go to Kogane right now. Our list price on this is $99.99. For better pricing, you know, contact one of our 50 distributor locations nationwide by clicking here. So I think that if you're a supplier that's going to put list pricing out there to at least give people better, because a lot of times people just want to know a ballpark price, right? We all know that distributors, and God bless all of you, you're always going to ask for special pricing. And one of the things that I'm notorious for doing is responding back with, well, how many are you asking for? And I've had amazing, brilliant salespeople come to me and say, well, they're looking at two a year. Well, guess what? You're not getting special pricing. You're getting your normal discount. But again, there's incentives that you that the distributors, if they start investing into the online e-commerce platform to compete, they have to recognize and see every day. Like Again, if I'm a brick and mortar distributor here in West Michigan, I'm going to have somebody on our team or myself every day going online to see if these catalog companies or these huge e-commerce platforms are offering incentives that we comfortably can match based on our discount structure or our, you know, the gross profit margin that we're, we're making. So for example, if, um, you know, like, well, this is the, this is what I was bragging about earlier. This is the world's smallest two position through a solenoid valve. If Kogane was not exclusive to just local distribution like we are today, and we were working with uh, Motion Industries, for example. If Motion put out, hey, if you buy, you know, uh, 500, you know, 005 series valves from Kogane, we're going to give you a $200 discount. Me as the distributor, I have to go back and say, all right, well, Motion maybe has more buying power, but I'm trying to connect and tighten my relationship with my supplier. So either A, the current discount structure, I can't offer that $200 off if they buy a minimum 500 piece order. I have to get creative and, and match or provide more value that's not going to hurt, um, you know, two things, not going to hurt my operational costs and it's not, it's not going to hurt my brand because I think what every distributor is trying to do, and for me, I would not want to be a distributor right now, is to put a value on the value add that you're doing because outside of representing a line and having these on the shelf, if your discount structure isn't an advantage, you have so little room for gross profit margin that you know you, you've got to come up with a strategy or work with your suppliers to have an incentive. You know, one of the things that we did at Kogane, and I'll share this: uh, in the world of pneumatics, directional control valves. Okay, right here. 
So this is a directional control valve stack. We see them on every conveyor, okay? This is our 10 millimeter series. Um, you know, one of our big competitors just came out with a new 10 and 15 millimeter because they realized that, you know, there's cost of uh, air consumption and, you know, living the life of an oversized valve and just using, you know, a sandwich regulators uh, or flow controllers doesn't work. Um, you know, one of the incentives that I said was, uh, we, I came up with this program called the Game Changer Program. So Kogan A, nobody knew the brand, but these are rated to 100 million cycles. So compared to the industry, compared to our competitors, who again, I totally respect, their direction control valves are rated to 30 million cycles. So if we are at the same price, but you know three or four times the life, that's gonna bring a lot of value to an OEM. Not so much you, the distributor, because your math is, well, I could sell them three 30 million cycle life valves instead of Kogan A's, so I'm gonna have less purchase orders. But that's neither here nor there. I had to come up with a way to say, okay, how are we gonna get market penetration? How are we gonna generate sales in this product category? The commodity is everybody has these. There really isn't a uh, advantage of ours versus somebody else other than downtime, installation, life cycle, and power consumption. Okay, um, everybody that we competed with is going to flow, you know, pretty much to the same. So the value opportunity was fast delivery. Typically, when you buy a directional control valve stack, for example, and I don't care if you buy it, you know, motion or whatever, it's typically a two to three week lead time. So what we did was we took, this was the idea, take some of our partner distributors, fly them to Tokyo, Japan, get them certified to where we're actually selling them the entire bill material. So they're stocking all the individual parts to make any manifold they want, whether it's on a DIN rail, aluminum block, two station, five station, whatever, ethernet IP. That distributor now has the ability to, if they choose to stock the parts, to now tell in their APR going against Motion and everybody else, hey, we partnered with Kogan A on this game changer program. If you need a, a directional control valve stack or a directional control valve manifold for Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, uh, flying leads, whatever, we can take your order, build it, test it, and ship it same day. That's huge. So um, that's been a great program, and we've had some success. We've had a lot of success. Where I think we're still struggling with it in my uh, I guess, review of how we've done since this product launches. It's still the challenge of people don't recognize the Kogan A brand. And if we're not uh, publishing our pricing, we're just not getting those, those conversations. So for me, when I talk about e-commerce, going back to your question, because Kogan A doesn't put pricing out there, yeah, I'm getting a lot of eyes and we're getting a ton of traffic on these. But that transaction, as we all talk about, it takes average five to six touches to get a customer to get a quote. We, we are sacrificing the opportunities of more transactions because we don't publish what our list price is to start. So um, I just think that as a supplier, you've got to be consistent in your messaging and you have to recognize what you're limiting yourself to if you don't publish list pricing. And you also have to recognize what you'd be hurting relationally with your uh, distribution channel to market by publishing less price. Thank you so much, Will.